Hi and welcome to the video. I'm Kane, the creator of the Ender IDEX and founder of Send3D. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up Cura for IDEX printing. First we'll set up separate printers for duplicate, mirror and two colour modes. Then we'll slice some sample files and go through the whole process. If there's anything this guide misses out or you need help with just drop me an email and I'll be happy to help. Part 1 Printer Setup We're going to create a new printer for each mode. In duplicate mode the two hot ends copy each other with a fixed gap between them. This way you can print two identical models side by side at the same time. Inside Cura select the current printer and choose Add Printer. Now select a non-network Creality Ender 3. Give it any name you like but I'd suggest including the word duplicate. Now the only thing we need to change is the start g-code. Head over to enderidex.com and go to the software help section. If you scroll down you'll see the g-code for duplicate mode. Copy all of this and replace the default start g-code back in Cura. We'll go over what this g-code does when we start slicing later. For mirror mode it's much the same process. Add a new Ender 3 and give it a name that includes the word mirror. Now grab the mirror mode g-code from the Ender IDEX website. Paste it in and you're good to go. Before we add the last printer there's an optional step that will make your life a lot easier when slicing. Head back to the Ender IDEX help page and download the Cura mesh file. Now we need to access Cura's application files. On a Mac you can right click on the application itself and select show package contents. On Windows you'll need to go to your program files folder and find the Cura folder within that. Once you're in navigate through resources, resources and then meshes. Copy over the STL file you just downloaded. Finally go up a level and open the definitions folder. Find the Creality Ender 3 file and open it in a text editor. You just need to change the file name for the platform at the top to enderidex.stl. Save the file and reboot Cura. You should see that your Ender 3 base printers no longer have the Ender logo on them. Instead there's three boxes. These boxes will be very useful later as a guide for where to place your duplicate and mirror mode prints. When you run a duplicate or mirror print it will stay in that mode until you change it. This means if you try to run an old g-code file after a duplicate print you might get twice the output you were expecting. To fix this we can update the start code for your original Ender 3. As before grab the code from the Ender IDEX help page and paste it into the settings for your original Ender 3. The main difference is that the first line sets the printer mode to parked print. The rest is just like normal. Now any regular Ender 3 print you slice will not run in duplicate or mirror mode by mistake. We can now set up the final two colour printer and this one is a little different. Add a new printer as before but this time select the custom option. Give it a name and click next. Jump back to the Ender IDEX help page again and scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll see the most up to date settings are here. It's just a matter of copying these over one by one into the new printer you just set up. You can also copy and paste the G code in too. The final thing to set up is the printing profiles. The default Ender 3 profiles and any you have saved will not work on this custom printer. You'll have to set them up again. To help with this you can download copies of the standard Ender 3 printer profiles. These can be found at the top of the Ender IDEX help page. Back in Cura click on the printing profile and choose the manage profiles option. Now you can import each of the four profiles one by one. That's it, you've set up all your print modes and you're ready to start slicing. Part 2 Slicing Once again we'll start with duplicate mode, so make sure you have your duplicate printer selected. You can now place the object you want to print, here I'm demonstrating with a shelf bracket. Place it towards the back left of the bed, 
ensuring it does not cross the long strip marked out at the front. This is because the second X carriage is just under 20 millimeters further forward. If the model printed by the first hot end is too far forward, the second hot end will print off the front of the bed. To make things easier, you should also use round numbers for the X and Y locations. Now we have a rough position, duplicate the model with right click, multiply, and add one. Type in the same coordinates for this new model so that it's in exactly the same location. You can now add an offset to the X location. This has to be at least 60 millimeters. Here I've added 70 millimeters, which gives it enough space. We also need to add 20 millimeters in the Y direction to account for the offset. Take a look at the bill plate and ensure there is no overlapping. Don't forget to account for skirts and brims if you're using them. Once you're happy, make a note of the difference in the X positions. Here it's 70 millimeters. Delete the second model and access the printer settings. In the start G code, we need to edit this first line. The S2 indicates we're using duplicate mode. R0 indicates the two hot ends will have zero temperature difference. And we'll change the X value to 70 for the offset we just worked out. Now close the window and slice your print. The rest is just like normal. You can put the G-code file on an SD card and run it. You can use this mode to duplicate all kinds of things. Lithophanes, tools, and even vase mode. All the settings you edit for Extruder 1 will be copied exactly by Extruder 2, like retraction and print speed. You can also duplicate multiple objects in a single print. Here I place three boxes in a row, whilst not crossing the front blocking strip. In the same way as before, duplicate a box and calculate the necessary X offset. It's always prudent to give it more space if you can. As before, delete the duplicate models, add in your offset, and slice the file. Finally, you can also duplicate with each hot end at a different temperature. For example, you may want to test materials for your part. The left may be printed in PLA at 200 degrees, while the right is printed in PETG at 240 degrees. All you need to do is edit the R value with the difference for hot end 2. So if you'd like it to be 40 degrees hotter, just change the value to R40. Also, remember to change it back again for any future duplicate prints. Mirror mode is similar to duplicate mode, but there are some key differences. In mirror mode, you do not declare an offset. Both hot ends home on their respective sides and will move in perfect mirror of each other. This means that if hot end one started printing on the far left of the bed, hot end two would start printing in the air over the display. Also, as the two will converge towards each other, you will need a gap in the center to avoid a collision. As you will have noticed, the new Ender 3 bed template clearly displays the no-go zones for a mirror print. There is a block on the left and in the center. As you can see, it's just a matter of placing the models in the gap on the bed. There is no offset to calculate. However, you can still go into the settings and change the R value for a temperature difference if you like. You can also set the part's cooling fan speed for the second hot end. Just remove the semicolon on the M106 line and edit the S value. S0 turns the fan off, while S255 turns the fan to full speed. You can set any value between these two numbers. Another way you can use mirror mode is to cut a symmetrical model in half and have each hot end print a side. You can then glue them together afterwards. This effectively halves your print time. To do this, we first need to edit the STL file we want to print. For this example, I'm going to mirror print the well-known T-Rex skull. Start by downloading a free piece of software called Mesh Mixer. This is used to edit and manipulate STL files before you print them. Once it's installed, open Mesh Mixer and drop your STL file into the window. On the left side of the screen, click Edit and then the Transform option. You should see some arrows appear on the model. Now inside the box, we're going to set Translate X, Y and Z to 0. 
This will perfectly center the model. Now edit the value for rotate X, Y or Z so that the base intersects the model directly on its symmetry line. For the T-Rex skull, I just had to rotate X to 90 degrees. When you're happy, click Accept. Now select Plane Cut and then Accept. This will cut off everything below the base, giving a perfect half. Now select Export and save the file as an STL. You can bring this new STL into Cura like normal. As it's a mirror print, make sure you have the right printer selected and place the model inside the safe zone. The rest is just a matter of slicing and printing. Part 3 Dual Colour We're now ready to take a look at dual colour and material printing. Start by selecting your custom IDEX printer. You'll notice at the top there are now two extruders. Both are PLA and shown in yellow. To make it easier, let's duplicate a material with a different colour. Click on the extruders, material, then manage materials. Select the material you want to use and click duplicate at the top. This will give you a carbon copy of that filament. Give it a different name, and change the colour to anything you like. The more contrasting, the better. Now let's bring in the model. Dual extruder prints come as two STL files. One for the first extruder, the other for the second. As you can see, it's possible to select any model and pick which extruder will print it. The model will change the colour of the extruder's material. This is why different colours are so important. We can move the two parts into place by centering them both and there you have a basic dual colour print. If you look at the preview, you can see the first hot end starts to print and once it's done the second hot end comes in and fills in the rest. When it comes to settings for a two colour print, the vast majority are the same as normal. However, there are three main areas to think about. First, under material is a new setting for standby temperature. This is the temperature the hot end will hold at when it's not printing. The hotter it is, the more oozing you'll get, with excess filament dribbling out whilst not printing. However, if the whole temperature is cooler, every switch will take a lot longer for it to heat up and start printing. It's also worth noting that when you change most settings, it will not change it for the other extruder you need to switch extruders and make the change again if you want it to apply to both. The second area to think about is prime towers and ooze shields. Prime tower is a small cylinder of filament. When hot end switch occurs, it primes a small amount of filament on the tower before it starts printing. This ensures a good even flow, like a skirt but for every single layer. An ooze shield is similar but is printed around the entire model and can catch filament strings that have oozed out from the hot end. Typically models that are small and have very tiny amounts of printing on each layer will benefit from a prime tower. And if you're using high hold temperatures or runny filaments, you may want to use an ooze shield. However, if your layers are quite large, for example a sign or plaque, you shouldn't need to use a prime tower. The third main area to think about and linked to prime towers is retraction. With dual extrusion you have additional options for when a hot end switches. You can set the distance and speed of retraction when a hot end stops printing and parks. This will typically be a much larger retraction than normal as you want to minimise oozing. Experiment with a combination of these three settings and you should be able to deal with the majority of dual extrusion challenges. Finally we're going to look at another dual extrusion model but this time one that is not symmetrical. In this case you'll need to manually place the two parts to ensure they are accurately aligned. Because the model is also print in place and expected to move freely, we need to get these joints aligned perfectly. A good way to check this is to slice the print and take a closer look layer by layer. You should be able to see clear gaps between the different parts without collisions. If they do overlap, try moving one of the parts and re-slicing. 
And if you find that while printing the model it's not lining up as you see in Cura, you probably need to calibrate your XY offset better. A link to the video on how to do this can be found in the description below. Hopefully this has given you the tools you need to start iDeck slicing in Cura. As with everything in 3D printing, it's good to experiment and discover what works best for you. Also, if you want to start iDeX printing, take a look at my Ender iDeX kit. It enables anyone with an Ender 3 to add a second independent extruder with ease. To find out more about what the kit can do, just visit enderidex.com. Thanks for watching and happy printing!